Hello friends, I am Dr. Kannan, Professor Mechanical Engineering, Anjali Amal Mahalang Engineering College. Uh, through this May lecture, I am going to discuss with you problems in uh, refrigeration. In the first part of the problem, we discussed uh, five problems and we solved few more problems on the refrigeration. So the vapor compression refrigeration cycle, we just review the basic equations to solve the problem. Uh, 1 to 2 is constant pressure evaporation in the evaporator. 2 to 3 is isentropic compression in the compressor. 3 to 4 is constant pressure heat removal in the condenser. And 4 to 1 is throttling expansion. And the similar, uh, all the four processes are given in the pressure enthalpy diagram also here. So, constant pressure process, compression process, constant pressure condensation and the constant enthalpy expansion. And the so coefficient of performance, COP equal to refrigeration effect divided by the compressor work input. So, refrigeration effect is the heat absorbed by the refrigerant in the evaporator which is H2 minus H1. And the compressor work input is enthalpy rise in the compressor, which is H3 minus H2. So, H2 minus H1 divided by H3 minus H4. And in all the problem solving, we take H4 equal to H1. So, this is constant enthalpy process. So, H1 equal to H4. And the refrigeration capacity, the amount of heat extracted in kilojoules per second, it is mass of the refrigerant circulated into enthalpy difference across the uh, evaporator and uh, power required to drive the compressor. So, again it is mass of the refrigerant multiplied by the enthalpy difference across the compressor. So, these are the three basic equations to solve the problem and we will take the problem number 4, example 4, an ice making plant using refrigerant R12 is having an evaporator saturation temperature of 20 degrees Celsius and the condenser saturation temperature of 35 degrees Celsius. The vapor is leaving the compressor at uh, 65 degrees Celsius. The following table shows the properties of the refrigerant. So, you are given the refrigerant property 25 degrees Celsius, evaporator temperature, 35 degrees Celsius, compressor temperature. So, we are given the saturation enthalpy of the liquid and saturation enthalpy of the vapor. And the enthalpy of superheated refrigerant at uh, 65 degrees Celsius is 225.5 kilojoules per kilogram. Number 1, subdivision 1, calculate the coefficient of performance of the system. Uh, if the capacity of the plant is 5 kilowatt, that is refrigeration capacity is 5 kilowatt, calculate the mass flow rate of the refrigerant and power consumption. So, this is from the gate question paper 2002. So, we write down the given data. So, condenser temperature is 25 degrees Celsius, evaporator temperature is, condenser temperature is 35 degrees Celsius, evaporator temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. Temperature at the end of the compression is T3 equal to 65 degrees Celsius and uh, heat absorbed, I mean heat extracted, the refrigeration capacity is 5 kilowatt. And the temperature entropy diagram for this cycle, vapor compressor cycle is, this is the, so at the end of the evaporation, it is saturated liquid, saturated vapor and at the end of the compression, it is superheated vapor and the end of the Condenser is saturated liquid. Now we take the uh, properties specific enthalpy of the refrigerant after compression. So after compression 225.5 it is given the problem specific enthalpy of the refrigerant before evaporation. So before evaporation is H1 which is equal to H4 which is saturated liquid. So H4 is saturated liquid which is H4. So at this temperature T3 equal to uh, condenser temperature 30 degrees Celsius. The HO4 is 69.6 kilojoules per kilogram. And the specific enthalpy of refrigerant before compression, so H2, which is HG2, it is saturated vapor, HG2, which is 176.5 kilojoules per kilogram, which is given in the table. The coefficient of performance equation is H2 minus H1 divided by H3 minus H2. Substituting 176.5 minus 69.6 divided by 225.5 minus 176.5 equal to 2.18. And uh, 
mass of the refrigerant we have to calculate. So mass of the refrigerant equal to refrigeration effect divided by the enthalpy difference. H2 minus H1 in the evaporator. So the refrigeration effect is given as 5 kilojoules per second, 5 kilowatts. So divided by H2 minus H1, which is 0 0.0467 kilograms per second. Now the power required to drive the compressor, P equal to M into H3 minus H2, which is 0.467 the mass of the refrigerant into enthalpy difference across the uh, compressor, which is 225.5 minus 176.5 equal to 2.28 kilowatt. So the answer for the problem, coefficient of performance of the system is 2.18. Mass flow, of the, mass flow rate of the refrigerant is 0 0.0467 kilograms per second and the power consumption is 2.28 kilowatts. The example number 5, a vapor compression refrigerator, refrigerator uses r tool as the refrigerant and the liquid evaporates in the evaporator at 258 Kelvin. The temperature of this refrigerant at the delivery of the compressor is 288 Kelvin when the vapor is condensed at 283 Kelvin. Find the COP if subdivision 1 there is no undercooling, subdivision 2 the liquid is cooled to cooled to I mean by 278 Kelvin uh, before expansion by the throttling. Take the specific heat and constant pressure for the superheated vapor as 0.64 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin and that for liquid the specific heat for liquid as 0.94 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. Other properties of R tool are given below in the table. So, this is from the university question paper in May 2009. So, the properties are given. So, 258 and 283 enthalpy HG enthalpy of vapor, enthalpy of liquid is HF, enthalpy of vapor is HG, entropy of the liquid is SF and entropy of vapor is SG. So, all the values are given for the given for the condensed temperature and the evaporator temperature. Now, the given data the evaporator temperature is 258 Kelvin which is minus 15 degree Celsius and condensed temperature is 283 Kelvin which is 10 degree Celsius. Uh, temperature at the end of the compression T3 equal to 288 Kelvin which is 15 degree Celsius. Now the when there is no undercooling, so this is the temperature entropy diagram for uh, a standard cycle, vapor compression cycle without any undercooling. So 2 is the saturated uh, vapor, 3 is a superheated vapor and the condensation, end of the condensation is saturated liquid. And the specific enthalpy of the refrigerant before compression, it is saturated vapor, H2 equal to HG2 equal to 180.88 kilojoules per kilogram and specific enthalpy of the refrigerant before evaporation, which is H1, which is equal to H2 and uh, 4, uh, which is equal to H4. So, 4 is the saturated liquid, which is H4. The value is 45.4 kilojoules per kilogram. And the specific enthalpy of the refrigerant after compression, it is superheated vapor, uh, which is H3 equal to Hg3 in plus Cp into T3 minus T3s. Yes. So T3 is given as 288, T3s yes, is 283. So substituting the values, it will be 194.8 kilojoules per then the coefficient of performance, COP equal to H2 minus H1 divided by H3 minus H2, uh, which is equal to 180.88 minus 45.4 divided by 194.8 minus 180.88 equal to 9.7. Now we will take the second case. The liquid is undercooled by 278 Kelvin. So the temperature T4 equal to 278 Kelvin and T4 dash equal to 283 Kelvin. Now, the specific enthalpy of refrigerant before compression 2, it is saturated uh, vapor H2 equal to Hg2, which is 180.88 kilojoules per kilogram. There is no change in the value. And the specific enthalpy of the refrigerant before evaporation, before evaporation is H1, which is equal to H4. Now, this H4 is lower than H4 dash, the lower, lower value, reducing the value by the undercooling. So, H4 equal to H4 dash enthalpy at this point minus heat loss during the undercooling, which is CPL, specific heat of the liquid into T4 dash minus T4. So, the temperature of the condenser and temperature after undercooling T4. So, 45.4 minus 0.94 into 283 is the condenser temperature, 278 is the temperature after undercooling, 
which is 40.7 kilojoules per kilogram. Then the specific enthalpy of the refrigerant after compression, which is H3 equal to HG3 plus Cp to T3 minus T3S. So, substituting 191.6 plus 0.64 into, so this is 194.8 kilojoules per kilogram. Now, the COP equal to H2 minus H1 divided by H3 minus H2, which is equal to 180.88 minus 40.7 divided by 194.8 minus 180.88, which is equal to 10.07. Now the answer is COP without undercooling is 9.73 and COP with undercooling is uh, 10.07. So we find here the COP is increasing uh, with the undercooling. And we take the example number 6. So uh, a R-tool refrigeration machine has saturated suction temperature of 5 degrees Celsius and saturated discharge temperature of 40 degrees Celsius, 40 degree Celsius for the compressor. The properties of the R toll are given below in the table. Complete uh, extraction from the refrigeration table and determine the following when the refrigerant is dry saturated at the end of the compressor. So, mass flow rate of the refrigerant per ton of refrigeration, the theoretical power per ton of refrigeration, and the COP of the uh, system. So, this is from the university question paper, uh, May 2009 again. Now the given data is evaporated temperature is 5 degree Celsius and condensed temperature is 40 degree Celsius. And the uh, diagram the, for the cycle is, this is the diagram, temperature interrupt diagram. So end of the evaporator, it is saturated vapor. So the vapor is uh, saturated vapor at the beginning of the compression process. So end of the compression is superheated vapor. And uh, T4, uh, 4 is the end of the condensation the saturated liquid. Now, the specific enthalpy of the refrigerant at the beginning of the compression, H2 equal to HG2 equal to 354.885 kilojoules per kilogram. And the specific enthalpy of the refrigerant at the beginning of the evaporation, uh, which is H1 equal to H4 equal to H4 equal to 239.03 kilojoules per kilogram. And uh, here at the 3 end of the superheater, uh, we end of the compressor, we have to find out the temperature of the superheated steam. So, to calculate the temperature of the superheated steam, S2 equal to S3, that is the condition. Entropy, uh, it is isentropic compression, so S2 equal to S3. So, using S2 equal to S3, at the 2 it is saturated vapor, SG2, at the 3 it is superheated vapor, SG3 plus Cp into logarithmic of T3 by T3S. So, substituting SG2 and SG3 from the table, the Cp value for the vapor 0.762 logarithmic of T3 by uh, the uh, temperature at the condenser is 40 degree Celsius plus 273. Uh, solving the equation, the temperature at the end of the compression, it is 317.5 Kelvin or 44.5 degree Celsius. Now, the specific enthalpy of the refrigerant at the end of the compression, it is superheated vapor H3 equal to Hg3 plus Cp into T3 minus T3S. Uh, substituting 368.81 plus 0.762 into 44.5 minus 40 degrees Celsius, 40 equal to 372.2 kilojoules per kilogram. This is the H3 value. Now, the mass flow rate of the refrigerant per ton of refrigeration. So, we know 1 ton of refrigeration equal to 3.5 kilojoules per uh, second. So, 3.5 uh, divided by 3.5 kilojoules per kilogram. So, this, uh, this is H2 minus H1. So, substituting H2 value and H1 value, you get 0 0.03 kilograms per second. This is the mass flow rate. And the power required to drive the compressor, M into H3 minus H2. So, M equal to 0 0.03 uh, into 372.2 minus 354.885 equal to 0 0.52 kilowatts. And the coefficient of performance equal to H2 minus H1 divided by H3 minus H2. Uh, substituting all the value, it is 6.69. And the answer is mass flow rate of the refrigerant per ton of refrigeration is 0 0.03 kilograms per second. Theoretical power required per ton of refrigeration is 0.52 kilowatts and COP equal to 6.69. So, these are all the answers. Then we take the example number 7. An ammonia ice plant operates between condensed temperature 35 degree Celsius and evaporated temperature minus 50 degree Celsius. It produces 5 tons of ice per day 
from water at 25 degree Celsius to ice at minus 5 degree Celsius. The NH3 enters the compressor as day saturated vapor and leaves the condenser as saturated liquid. Determine the capacity of the refrigeration plant, mass flow rate of the refrigerant, discharge temperature of NH3 from the compressor, power of the compressor motor if the isentropic efficiency of the compressor is 85 percent, mechanical efficiency of the compressor is 90 percent and uh, you calculate the relative efficiency. Later need of ice is 335 kilojoules per kilogram, specific heat of ice is 1.94 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin and specific heat of water is 4.2 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. So using the following properties of NH3. So the ammonia vapor properties are also given here in the table. Now the given data, condenser temperature is 35 degree Celsius, evaporate temperature is minus 15 degree Celsius, mass of the ice is 5, 5 tons per day, water temperature is 25 degree Celsius, ice temperature is minus 5 degree Celsius, isentropic efficiency is 0.85, mechanical efficiency is 0.9 and specific heat of water is 4.2 kilojoules per kilogram and this is what your temperature entropy diagram uh, for this cycle. So, the entry of the compressor is saturated vapor, entry of the uh, end of the condenser is saturated liquid and the end of the compression it is superheated vapor. Now, the specific enthalpy of refrigerant at the beginning of the compression. So, the here 2 which is saturated vapor which is 1426 kilojoules per kilogram. And specific enthalpy of the refrigerant beginning of the evaporation H1 which is equal to H4. Uh, again, it is saturated liquid which is 374.5 kilojoules per kilogram from the table. And uh, here we have to calculate the temperature. So, superheated vapor temperature we have to calculate. So, for that the condition is S2 equal to S3. Entropy is constant for the compression process, isentropic process. So, taking S2 equal to S3 and S2 equal to Sg2 which is S3 plus Cp into logarithmic of T3 by T3S. So, 5.549 equal to 4.93 plus 2.8 into logarithmic of T3 by 20, 35 plus 273. So, solving it is 384.2 Kelvin or 111.2 degree Celsius. So, the temperature at the end of the compression is 111.2 uh, degree Celsius. And specific enthalpy of the refrigerant at the end of the compression H3 equal to Hg3 plus Cp into T3 minus T3S. So, 1471 plus 2.8 into 111.2 minus 35 equal to 1684.36 kilojoules per kilogram. And the heat extracted from the ice, the refrigeration effect. So, the water from 25 degree Celsius is cooled to ice at minus 5 degree Celsius. Now, the heat extracted equal to mass of the ice into heat removed from the water. So, 5, 5 tons of ice per day. So, 5 by 24. The ton is converted into kilogram by multiplying by 30. The 24 is converted into seconds multiplied by 3600. So, heat of water, first water is cooled from 25 degree Celsius to 0 degree Celsius and the water is converted into ice at 0 degree Celsius that is lateral heat of ice Then the ice is cooled further from 0 degree Celsius to minus 5 degree Celsius. So, substituting CPW equal to 4.2, temperature difference of water is 25 degree Celsius, lateral heat of ice is 335. So specific heat of ice equal to 1.94 and uh, minus 0 minus of minus 5. So, uh, the calculating the amount of heat extracted to convert water at 25 degree Celsius into ice at minus 5 degree Celsius, it is 26 kilojoules per kilogram, kilojoules per second. This is what the refrigeration effect. Now, mass of the refrigerant equal to refrigeration effect or heat extracted divided by H2 minus H1. So, substituting 26 divided by 146, 1426 minus 347.5 equal to 0.024 kilograms per second. And the power required to drive the compressor. Now, general formula what we used earlier, it is M into H3 minus H2. Now, the two efficiencies are given. So, isentropic efficiency, mechanical efficiency of the compressors are given. So, we have to divide by these two values. So, 0.85 into 0.9. So, it is giving 8.1 kilowatts. Now, theoretical coefficient of performance from the enthalpy value COP equal to H2 minus H1 divided by H3 minus H2 which is 1426 minus 347.5 divided by 1684.36 minus 1426 equal to 4.17. The actual coefficient of performance actual COP equal to 
refrigeration effect divided by the work done. So, 26 divided by 8.1, this is 3.2 actual COP. The relative COP equal to actual COP divided by theoretical COP, which is 3.2 divided by 4.17 equal to 0.76. Now, the answer is the capacity of the refrigeration plant is 26 kilojoules per second. Mass product of the refrigerant is 0 0.024 kilograms per second. Discharge temperature of ammonia from the compressor is 112, uh, 111.2, that is 111.2 degrees Celsius. Power consumption, power of the compressor motor is 8.1 kilowatts and relative efficiency is 0.76. So, these are all the answers for the uh, problem. And uh, problem number 8, example 8, an ammonia refrigeration refrigerator produces 30 tons of ice at 0 degrees Celsius in a day of 24 hours. The temperature range of the compressor is 25 degrees Celsius and minus 50 degrees Celsius. The vapor is saturated at the end of the compression. The vapor is saturated at the end of the compression. Assume a COP of 60% of theoretical value. Uh, calculate the power required to drive the compressor. Assume lettering rate of IC is 335 kilojoules per kilogram. Uh, the properties of the ammonia are given below in the table. So, the table value. HF value, HG value, SF value, SG value are given here in the table. So, HF in kilojoules per kilogram, HG in kilojoules per kilogram, SF in kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin and SG in kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. So, 25 degree Celsius is the condenser temperature, minus 15 degree Celsius is the evaporator temperature. So, the given data, mass of the IC equal to 30 tons per 24 hours from, from and at 0 degree Celsius. The IC is produced at 0 degree Celsius from 0 degree Celsius, water is at 0 degree Celsius and ice is also at 0 degree Celsius. Condenser temperature is 25 degree Celsius, evaporate temperature is minus 15 degree Celsius and relative COP is 0 0.6, later rate of ice equal to 335 kilojoules per kilogram. And this is what the temperature entropy and the pressure enthalpy diagram for the condition 3, what is mentioned problem, uh, saturated vapor at the end of the compression process. So, uh, 2 is the wet vapor and 4 is the saturated liquid. Specific enthalpy of the refrigerant at the end of the compression H3 equal to HG3 equal to 1465.8 kg per kilogram. And specific enthalpy of refrigerant at the beginning of the evaporation H1 equal to H4, uh, which is H4, which is 112.34 kg per kilogram uh, to find the dryness fraction. So, here at the point 2 before the uh, compression process, we require the dryness fraction of the uh, refrigerant. Uh, once again, the condition is S2 equal to S3. So, S2 equal to SF2 plus X2 into SG2 minus SF2 equal to S3 equal to SG3. Uh, substituting all the values, we find the X2 value is 0.83. So, the dryness fraction at this point before the compression, it is 0.83. Now, the specific enthalpy of the refrigerant at the end of the compression, H2 equal to HF2 plus X2 into HG2 minus HF2. Uh, which is 112.34 plus 0.83 multiplied by 1426.5 minus 112.34 equal to 1203 kilojoules per kilogram. So, H2 equal to 1203 kilojoules per kilogram. Now, actual COP of the machine is COP equal to 0.6 into this is the theoretical COP. So, the uh, relative COP 0.6 is given. So, H2 minus H2 by H3 minus H2. So, substituting the COP equal to 2.49. And the heat extracted from water uh, at 0 degree Celsius to produce ice at. So, heat extracted from water at 0 degree Celsius to produce ice at 0 degree Celsius. This is only latent heat of ice. So, mass of the ice and the heat removed from the water. So, heat removed is only latent heat of water. Lettering it of water, I mean lettering it of ice. So, 30 into 1000 divided by 24 into 3600 and lettering it of ice is equal to uh, 30 into substituting everything, we will get to 116.3 kilojoules per kilogram. So, the amount of heat extracted is 116.3 kilojoules per kilogram uh, for uh, producing the ice of 30 tons in a day. And the mass of the refrigerant equal to M equal to refrigeration effect divided by the enthalpy difference across the evaporator. So, substituting M equal to 0.1 kilograms per second. And the power required to drive the compressor uh, M into H3 minus H2, uh, which is 0.1 into 1465.3 uh, 
minus 1203, this is 26.23 kilowatts. The answer is power required to drive the compressor is 26.23 kilowatts. And thank you. We will continue in the next lecture.